Growing Aviator channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to turn this boring old sectional into this. Well, let's do it. All right, so here's the website that I used to essentially build this whole thing. Thanks to a guy named, I believe it's John Marzulli who threw all this together and wrote it for a uh, layman such as myself to be able to use. Uh, he wrote all the software as well as put tutorials and uh, pictures up. Uh, pilots love pictures. Uh, essentially describing how to do everything. I'll throw the link to this as well as the supplies that I bought in the description below. And essentially from here on out, just show you guys step by step how I implemented everything on this site. What's up guys we just got the soldering done for the board so got uh, three average to below average solder joints I guess you call them in there we got the uh, three pin connector on the end this guy uh, will end up going into the LEDs so we got the suitcase we're gonna grab the raspberry pie now start assembling this bad boy let's do it All right, you see we've used ports 25, 23, and 19 solder wires too. We used the JST connector, uh, the three pin one included that was the male. Uh, it's gonna connect into the female side of the LEDs. All right, so what I just said was backwards. Uh, this one took me a couple days to figure out and this would be the first mistake that I'd make doing this project. So, uh, in the video there, I just said that I soldered a male, the one with the three prong JST connector into the uh, outport pins on the Raspberry Pi and connected to the female side on the LEDs. Well, that's actually backwards. And this one took me a couple days to figure out uh, when I couldn't get the LEDs to actually illuminate. So, here's the deal. Uh, you wanna actually look at the board of the LEDs you get and see which board has the lettering for I and the lettering for O. Uh, all wires, all four wires coming out of the board will be the same. I took the male connector and soldered it uh, to the board and then connected it to a female. Well, the female is actually the output side. So long story short, I had to unsolder the male connector and solder a three pin female connector to the Raspberry Pi, connecting it to the male side uh, on the LEDs themselves. Sweet. With that said, let's move on. All right, now that we have Raspbian all installed, uh, we are on the desktop. We're gonna go ahead and download the software.
All right, what's up guys? We're back outside here. We got the uh, software and we got the Raspberry Pi hardware all suitcase. So now we're gonna uh, finish up our sectional so that we can go ahead and get these LEDs mounted. Uh, let's take a look at what we got. So specifically with the sectionals, I took the San Antonio and Brownsville sectional from my area. I trimmed them up as appropriate and then glued them together so that it was more or less a seamless transition. I found these uh, quarter inch kind of MDF pieces of uh, cardboard type material, glued them together. Uh, and what that did for me is once I glued the sectionals on it, it essentially equaled the thickness or rather the height of the LEDs. So that way the LEDs wouldn't be sticking out past the top of the sectional. I definitely wanted them flush or just below flush. So next I'm gonna go ahead and trim this edge off with the circular saw and uh, try to use maybe that scrap piece and figure out how I can drill these holes without actually tearing the paper, which is a concern. Uh, you see the size of the airports here essentially match up with the thickness of the LED, although some of them are slightly smaller, uh, in which case there I'm just going to offset the hole just a little bit so I'm not covering up the airport information. Uh, sweet. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so we've drilled a couple holes. Uh, I ended up finding a 5 16 drill bit fit the LED uh, almost perfectly. One thing I was worried about was the drill bit shredding the paper, but uh, it does not seem to be an issue. So let's take a look at what we got. Lastly, before I actually drilled the rest of the holes, I went on Sky Vector and mapped out most of the airports that I thought would fit inside the area. Uh, while I was out there in the garage though, I did bring my iPad with ForeFlight just to uh, back myself up. All right, guys, we're back inside. We've got all the holes drilled. Uh, I took the drill bit by hand too and just hollowed them out just to uh, make sure that the LEDs can slide right through. What we're gonna do now is take all 50 and I'm just gonna slowly hot glue them in. One thing to keep in mind uh, is we are gonna, just because of the, the length in between each LED is about three to four inches, maximum maybe about three inches, we are gonna have to skip a few LEDs in order to get the whole map. Um, so that said, uh, we'll go ahead and try to plan this out and get them as closely spaced together as possible. Let's do it. I'll show you the back of the board here before we move on to the software. We ended up using super glue just uh, because hot glue was taking too long to cure. You can see that we use the four pin, uh, a male and a female JST connector just to splice in uh, an extension a few places actually. And then some of the LEDs we just didn't end up needing. Uh, down below here we have the bullet connector which provides power. Uh, the blue is the negative from the LED and red's the positive and then that bullet connector just uh, goes right into the wall on its own power supply. We have the Raspberry Pi here uh, with the three pin connectors that we soldered in uh, the second time once I got the connections right and that goes into the LED on the input side. We still have the HDMI and the mini USB uh, cables here. I'm actually remote desktoping into the Raspberry Pi so I'm not actually using these inputs but this is how you'll connect into it uh, if you don't set that up. Otherwise the Raspberry Pi has its own power cord uh, and that completes the setup. All right, first thing we'll do is open the drive and find categorical sectional on the left. We'll now click the data folder, find the KAWO to KOSH uh, file already included. We're gonna copy and paste it and then rename it to something that makes sense. I'm gonna name mine South Texas, making sure that the .json extension stays there. We're now gonna open it up and via hyperlapse here, I'm just gonna quickly go and delete uh, all the original ICOs between the uh, quotations. 
uh, make sure that you don't change anything else in the file structure. We'll go ahead and click save and then move it over to the side once you're finished. All right, we're gonna click Categorical Sectional again and then find check underscore lights underscore wiring and open it up. Once it's open, all we have to do is click run. Uh, part of the program here is it will run all the lights through a test, so just make sure that all your lights are actually working. Once that's complete, it's gonna illuminate the first LED. So with the program running and the test complete, as you'll see, it says press enter to continue. So this script essentially allows us to step through each LED one by one. We'll figure out which airport it's associated with uh, and then uh, type it in our airport file. So press enter continues, pretty self-explanatory. You see LED zero here. Uh, LED zero is actually the first LED. Uh, it's zero base index. KBVS is on there because uh, we're still looking at the original airport file. We haven't changed the config to point to our new one yet. All right, so look at the sky vector. It says KBRO or Brownsville, it's LED one. So I'm gonna type that in incorrectly. Here we go, KBRO is typed in. Um, and then I'm gonna press enter and we'll move on to the next LED. I'm gonna hyperlapse this again, uh, just because it's more or less the same through all of the 40 or so LEDs that I have. One thing you will see though, is that every once in a while I'm skipping an LED uh, or I'm skipping a line. And that is because uh, as you saw in previous images, I didn't necessarily use every single LED. Uh, and so there's no airport associated with those. So sometimes if you hit enter and no LED is illuminated, check behind your sectional, it is probably illuminated, you just didn't use it. And in that case, we'll just uh, leave that line blank and continue on. All right, so go ahead and hit file and save, and then we're gonna go to data, config, and we're gonna change this to the name of our airport file. Also double check while you're here, the pixel count and the mode is correct, which it should be by default. We'll file save and close all this out. Now go ahead and click the uh, command prompt icon or shell or uh, whatever the heck it's called, and then literally just copy and paste this from the GitHub page. Uh, what we're doing is setting the uh, program to automatically run at boot of the Raspberry Pi. Once you have it all typed out here, uh, to save it, all you have to do is hit Control X, uh, and then Y for yes, and then the Enter key, and you'll be done. Sweet, so as you guys see, the aviation weather map, uh, LED METAR map, sky vector for your wall, whatever you want to call it, it works perfect and it's looking awesome. Really nice to be able to walk in the office in the morning, my cup of coffee, just take a quick gander at the weather, check in the box weather brief complete, get to the airport, get the jet and go flying. No, not actually, but it does provide some great situational awareness as to what the weather's like across the area. More importantly though, it makes your friends envious and it looks badass up on your office wall. A uh, couple lessons learned, so we talked about, just make sure you have the input uh, versus the output side of uh, the LED strain correct there, so serve yourself a couple days of hassle that I went through. And then additionally, just try to plan out the spacing uh, of how you're gonna set your LEDs up so that you minimize the number of them that you have to skip. 
that's a wrap for today's video. Thank you guys for hanging on for this one. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't liked the video. If you do, smash the reminder or alerts button for uh, future videos, and I'll put that content out there for you guys. Thanks so much. Be sure to drop any comments or uh, suggestions for feedback you have. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.